Biden's border disaster in focus on this Friday. And the president is getting some help from his fans and the liberal media. There is no better example of what MAGA world wants for the rest of America than Texas. Draconian measures meant to secure the border, which includes letting migrants, including a mother and her two children, drown. Setting up buoys with buzz saws, barring federal agents from assisting with border control, and passing legislation that makes it a state crime to cross the border. This massive resistance, it sounds like the old Southerners who said that we will resist integration by any means necessary. On her podcast, Katie Couric seems to be offering Vice President Kamala Harris a pass. You know, Biden put her in a lead role on solving the border issue. Early on, I know you were tasked with understanding the root causes of the immigration yes. crisis, but you are not in charge of the border, which I think is important to point out. It has become so deeply partisan and the subject of then political gamesmanship when in fact the solutions are at hand. We hope and, 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 and are really trying to compel, um, in particular some of the Republicans in Congress, to participate in the solution. We want to fix it. They want to run on it. They want, to, they want a political issue to run on in November. Let's flash back to 2021. Here's the president on the vice president's border role. It's not her full responsibility and job, but she's leading the effort because I think the best thing to do is to put someone who, when he or she speaks, they don't have to wonder about, is that where the president is? When she speaks, she speaks for me. When she speaks, she speaks for me, said Joe Biden. And the issue was the border. No confusion about this. That was what he told her to do. Fix it. Kellyanne Conway, Fox News contributor, former counselor to President Trump. Great to have you in focus. So the vice president says that she's been tasked with, and Katie Couric really helped her out, you know, root causes, all of that. I mean, how would you grade the job she's done at the border, and what were the expectations? The border, she gets an F, as does the president. I think there's no clearer daily visible reminder of the flailings and failings of the Biden-Harris administration than the border. We see it every single day. That's why you have the increasing number of Democratic elected officials, Harris, calling them out. The female Democratic governor of Arizona, Katie Hobbs, John Fetterman, Democratic senator, freshman senator from Pennsylvania, they're willing to use a word that Joe Biden and Alejandro Mayorkas, and certainly uh, the borders are, given a Russian title to do absolutely nothing, Kamala Harris won't use, and it's the word crisis. Look, the will of the people is to be followed when you're an elected official. The people have made very clear in a tripartisan way a majority of Republicans, a majority of independents, and the growing plurality of Democrats are saying that border security is the top or in the top three to five issues for them. Uh, when Joy Reid and others say this is a political issue, you just had on two governors and before that mm -hmm. legal experts mm -hmm. saying this is actually a legal issue. They're on solid legal ground. I think people are making it an emotional political issue. Um, trying to scare folks. And actually, when you talk about Texas, this uh, old Southerners nonsense is completely off base. Um, it's completely ridiculous and racist to begin with. Of course, that's what she does. But And somehow people just won't fire her. But Texas, 35 percent of the people there speak a primary language, not English. 40.2 percent are Hispanic. The majority of Texans, as we sit here, Harris Faulkner, are not white. About 13, 14 percent African American, 40 percent Hispanic. You do the math. This is not hard. Multi generational households. So mm -hmm. the Texas voters and population have put into office Greg Abbott and Ken Paxson and others who today, Dan Patrick, others today, who are taking action to defend the sovereignty and the safety of our nation, uh, beginning at Texas at the border. Both my parents were born in Texas. God rest their souls aunts, uncles, 11 cousins. There are a lot of people of color in Texas and my family alone. And that's what you're pointing out. And to turn this into anything other than a legal issue is not just offensive. It is a dereliction of duty. They got to fix it. It doesn't matter right. what the people look like. The Americans are red, white and blue. 
as you've just said so eloquently. Too. Harris, 94 executive orders, 94 times mm -hmm. Joe Biden has taken the pen without Congress and done something on the border, including August of 2022 when he gutted, he got rid of Remain in Mexico, a policy that had bipartisan support that was working. Since then, 1.5 million Customs and Border Patrol says have gotten, uh, have been released and we have no way of tracking them. They're just mm -hmm. the ones that we know that we can't track. And then May of 2023, he took action again um, to, to just sort of reduce our ability to know who's coming in and why. You've seen the statistic, 24,000 Chinese nationals. The list goes on and on. And so I was talking to a United States senator last night who had visited the California part of the border. I mean, just that is the largest piece of land where people are, are coming through of different nationalities. We literally don't know who's here. And for them to say it's anything other than a legal issue and a matter of national security and sovereignty is truly political. Uh, real desperate. quickly, I, I do want to say barely any coverage from the big three, as I call them alphabet soup networks, because their letters don't spell anything, Fox <laughs> does. After the U.S. Supreme Court ruling on the razor wire, they've done hardly anything. Between the evening news and the morning broadcast, CBS spent four minutes and 39 seconds on the topic. ABC and NBC, zero minutes and zero seconds. That's according to the Media Research Center. So I just toss that into our conversation. A quick response and we'll move on. Sure. The job of the media, as you know, is to get the story, is to report the news. This is a story. This is news. Their job is to get the story, not get the former president. And in not reporting mm. that, I believe it's a conscience decision. They don't want to talk about the border at all, even when they have a small win from the Supreme Court. They want this to be about abortion, January 6th, maybe toss in a little climate change, Trump, Trump, Trump. Uh, and, and they are throwing their whole lot there. So even when they can say something positive about their crazy view on the border, they refuse to cover it because they don't, they want to act like we don't know what we see. We want to act like this is not a problem. So let's talk about that U.S. Supreme Court decision. Uh, today is the deadline for Texas, as we know. That's why we're all keeping it in focus today. For Texas to allow those federal agents to come in, the U.S. Supreme Court says that they can do that. It didn't say that they must do that. Your thoughts? Well, that's what's happening here. It's the way some of the judicial opinions often go, which is you're, you are permitted to do X, but you're not mandated to do Y. And I think that's really important here. And it's why you see over 20 governors supporting the actions of Governor Abbott. Every state is a border state, obviously. And also you see many in law enforcement and the law itself hold the enforcement supporting um, their ability to do that as well. I think it's also why Governor Abbott has gone back and put more wire up. He sees it mm -hmm. as a workable deterrent. And Harris, let's let's sew this all together very simply. Governor Abbott is using a means that he knows is effective, and the Biden administration are using means that we know are ineffective. Yeah, I, I mean, just watch some of the social media. Governor DeSantis in Florida also weighing in, an attorney, so on and so forth. I mean, there are just so many. When you look at that, that yes. map of the country, 25 could go higher if some of those Democrats get pushed from their citizens. Let's see if that happens this quickly. A federal judge yesterday sentenced former Trump advisor Peter Navarro. He got four months in jail, $9,500 fine for refusing to comply with a subpoena from the House Democrats in the January 6th investigation. Prosecutors were asking for a maximum of six months and a $200,000 fine. Navarro has argued that executive privilege allows him not to testify. It is a case that really asks the important question of whether a senior White House aide and alter ego of the president can be compelled to testify by Congress. Okay, and don't miss this. Navarro is calling his prosecution politically motivated. And a lot of people agree with him. There's a long list of high profile names who have defied subpoenas and were not charged for doing it. It includes people from both sides of the political aisle. And of course, our most recent example is the president's son, Hunter Biden, who if we'd done what he did lying on a gun form, we'd go to prison. Kellyanne. Yes, and some have, many have. Harris, look, justice should be blind and the scales of justice should be balanced out for everyone, not based on what they look like or who they are or which president they worked for. And this, what you just showed, 
uh, versus Peter Navarro. This is why people complain routinely to pollsters like me about what they call the two-tiered uh, system of justice. And they also don't like wasting government resources mm. on people, places, and things they think aren't as urgent and exigent to our national security, to our freedoms, to fairness, uh, than what you see here. Kellyanne I'm Conway. sure Peter will appeal. I've not talked to him in a long time. I'm sure he will mm -hmm. appeal. Kellyanne Conway, great to have you in focus. A big topic today on the border. Thank Appreciate you, Harris. You. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-host Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.